Hey, it's rolling. <laughs> rolling, rolling. R raw hide. How you all geezers doing? Uh, at the end of the program, I'm going to tell you about what's in this. You didn't capture the name, did you? <laughs> That's why I'm 75 and have a perfect liver. I've made homebrew beer. I've made homebrew wine. And I just got back from the brewery. Here in Madison, Indiana. I asked for the trash can beer. What that really is, the initial name was cleanup beer. They took all the leftovers of all the beers that they had, and if they didn't have enough to make them, uh, to, to put it on draft, they poured it into a container and they called it, they called it cleanup beer. So when I go in there, I say, I want that trash can beer. Everybody, turn, everybody turns around and says, that, that's not on the menu, but I want that too. If he likes it, I want it. What it is, is a combination of all the beers they make. It became so popular that they put it on the register of beers and, uh, that they sell, and I call it trash can beer. So, uh, and you know what? This was the first day I called it trash can beer. <laughs> And they knew exactly what I was talking about because that's what I always drank. The they call it CU clean up beer. Okay, let's get on with um, old man's talk and old women's talk, and young women and young guys because you're we're all the same. We all like the same taste of beer, we all like the uh, same foods, we all eat at McDonald's, sometimes at McDonald's. Don't, don't get the quarter pounders with the onions yet, because one person's died and several went to the hospital from s some uh, bacteria in it. What we're talking about tonight is something that is uh, clear off what I've been talking about. I had to decide after eating how much to tip the person talk uh, that, uh, that I was talking with, the server. And then when I went to the brewery, I had to decide how much to tip her. I need to take that tag off. It looks tacky. So, welcome to my channel. I'm Jim Wortham, and it's totally unscripted stream of consciousness, but educational. I guarantee you'll learn things before it's over. If you hang in here for this, which I'll mention toward the end if I don't forget, that will keep your liver clean and detoxed so you can drink or eat junk food and, and, and your liver will be cleaned out to some degree. Old people's talk, young people's talk, everybody's talk is tonight. Okay, have you ever seen a person go to a fast food place? And we're talking about 
Captain D's for talking about McDonald's for talking about Wendy's and all the others that I didn't name. And after they left, they leave a tip on the on the table. You ever met anybody like that? Well, you're looking at them. You're looking at them. You're saying, why would I do such a foolish thing? Well, let's start this way. By the way, I'm in a new shack. This is this is my um, underground uh, man cave. I had to move out of where I usually am because of the uh, light coming in. By the way, God said back the clock an hour. I was told tonight. Okay, well, here, here's the deal about the tipping. I want to test this thing out. If you give to help a person out, and you hear this more in the church language than you'll hear it from me. You'll hear, you, you go to YouTube under the um, sections on uh, giving and receiving by, by preachers preaching. Oh, you'll get tenfold. You'll get twentyfold. You'll get a hundredfold back from tithing. Yeah, and I'll look up. I'll look up how many houses they have and airplanes and how much money they make. Well, I wanted to go direct to the source, okay? I'm not going to say anything bad about... I'm not going to touch and say anything negative about God's prophets, apostles, preachers, teachers. I made that promise. Even though I totally disagree in my mind with what they're teaching, I'm not going to say a bad word about it. They're God's people. Some people are actually benefiting. Some people, their lives are being changed for now and forever. Even if what they're teaching is a bit off from what I believe. So let's let let's let's put the the preaching aside and just go with helping individuals with t with uh, giving money. Okay, now having said that, I don't know where my money would go if I sent it to a ministry. I don't know if it'll go for an airplane. or for preaching the gospel to someone, or for another mansion. I don't know. But I know this. When, when a woman sat down with a bunch of us guys, and we were church guys, and uh, what, what do I mean by church, guys? I don't mean that I go to church every Sunday. I mean, we believe in the, the biblical uh, uh, King James Version or any, any closely um, related to that translate, translation. So about, about five of us, and this one guy's a little bit more outgoing than me, and he, he says to the waitress, this is on the topic of tithing or giving money, really giving money, not tithing, but giving money. Giving money 
with no expectations of getting anything back, but knowing that what you sow, the money that you give will come back in different ways and it may not even be in the form of money. The gift may not be in money. So we were getting ready to eat, Haley ate, and she was nice, and this got us out going, one of the five of us, said, hey, um, we're all Christians, is there anything that we can pray for you? that you need right now? And she said, oh my gosh, she says, I'm gonna lo lose my house in two days if I don't get s so much money. This was in Lexington, Kentucky, at, at a middle of the road restaurant. And we say, um, we'll pray for you. We'll pray that you don't lose your your home. And uh, she told us how much money it was. You know, it was over 500. Now we're going back a few years. The <laughs> things that were 500 are now 1,000. So here we are. <clears throat> We all pitch in tip money. And we were getting ready to get up, at, get out of our chairs, and somebody said, Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And we thought, What? Do, do, do what again? Eat? He said, no, donate, put some more money on our tip. Everybody did, all five of us. No one knew what anybody was giving. The second time. Okay, a year later, I'm in that same restaurant but by myself, and I saw the manager. I said to the manager, I said, uh, what's the biggest tip you've ever heard of? any of your servers getting and his eyes slid up he didn't know me from adam it'd been a year since i've been there he said you're not gonna believe this about a year ago there were five men sitting over there They left enough tip money to where she was able to pay the payment on her house that month or she was going to be evicted. And he said, I remember how much it was and he told me it was between 500 and 600. He said, it was almost to the penny what they left. So, if I go into church, I will. I will. I will donate money. But this story, I'm telling you, is true. In fact, one of the guys that 
that was there wrote a book. And the book's called, he is a minister, he's retired. Can't think of his name. He said that if I was doing it over in the ministry, what I would do, seven things I would do over and seven things I'd never do again. I'll think of his name here before, hopefully before we close. Um, he was a church, just so, just so you know, he, just a normal church, Christian church, called the Southeast Christian Church in Louisville, Southeast Christian Church. As much as I knew him, I don't know why I can't tell you his name right now, but it'll come to me. Um, Sideline. When they called him to the church that only had a hundred or so to begin with, they turned him down. This was when he applied for his first church. And uh, this is off the topic, but it, 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 it just shows you. It just shows you what good things that can happen. He um, his second place. First place got hard. But a bigger church hired him for more money. And I watched this this minister start at the small church, build a bigger church, and then built the biggest one in Louisville, Kentucky, Southeast Christian Church with campuses. Uh, when I say campus, they're broadcasting his service to different places, even uh, uh, different counties in, in, in Indiana. Why can't I think of his name? Um, and I've got his book autographed. Um, that's one of the true stories. He would always give more money, more tithing. Well, that wasn't tithing, just tipping. Okay, um, so you ask, why did I leave quarters and dimes and 50 cents and maybe a dollar bill at Wendy's on the table? I was testing this giving and receiving idea. And, and, and that, we're, we're going back to when I was in college, okay? And I would do this if I was by myself. If I wasn't by myself, I didn't do it. Didn't think, I wanted people to think I was crazy. Well, I just got back from eating, like I said. I only ate. A five dollar breakfast biscuit because I'm on a diet. So I went ahead and tipped her twenty dollars. She didn't know it when I checked out. She just, because uh, the, the bill hadn't even been typed out, I just went up and paid for it. Then I went to the brewery, and uh, they, both places near me, they don't know me to be a, a bad tipper or a good tipper, but uh, she didn't get quite that much <laughs> tip. <laughs> I only had two brews. Uh, the um, 
thrill that I have if I know a person at the regular restaurant I go to, and there's about four, the minimum I leave, if I know that if I know the person, is ten dollars. There's a case where I may give twenty. Where this one girl's, this one girl's insurance was cut off. One of the servers was cut off in extremely bad health, including diabetes that goes up and down and several other illnesses. And she's, she only missed one, one day of work this year. She may get $20, regardless of if it's a cup of coffee. Um, not always 20. Her name's Christy. So nice. I asked her, I said, are you getting all your medicine and insulin and all? She said, no, they cut my they cut my insurance off because I reported all my tips and it was just a few dollars over the cutoff where I could have kept my, my insurance, which was... Uh, form of Medicaid and possibly Medicare to add it on. Cut the whole thing off. So she's operating now with a rapid swing diabetes without insurance. And that's gone on for several months. I said, does your employer know this? His name's Jeff. Jeff and Mindy, the employers, the owners. No, she's not going to tell them. I thought, my God, what? all they had to do is lower your salary. I mean, they don't make but two bucks an hour anyhow. Cut it down to one so she can get her insurance back because the tips will be good anyhow. Well, she was one of the only ones that told what her tips really were. Most people maybe try to go with uh, a portion of their tips. And then I said, look, I, I can help you. I'm licensed in the mental health field on their four licenses to help you. Oh, you're saying, what's a, what's a license? It doesn't really matter, but one's a licensed clinical social worker, licensed marriage and family therapist, licensed alcohol and drug counselor, and licensed school psychologist, and, and then certified psychologist over in Kentucky. And I will get all your doctor's reports. Integrate them into one big report. And we'll keep doing this each time you're turned down until you're accepted. We'll get an attorney involved that has a good rapport with some judge that uh, believes uh, in his integrity. We'll get you on it. Now, I haven't gotten a phone call from her yet, or if I have, I haven't had my cell phone on. As you can tell, I'm pretty, I'm pretty lax about my. I got one here that works only on text and calling out. And I got one here, one one here I can call, but it doesn't receive text well. 
you try to tell that to somebody that has an iPhone and their eyes will spin around and they'll say you're getting old aren't you you got dementia you got one phone call that you can text out on and call out on but nobody can call you yeah because for some reason they put the introduction in Spanish and I've talked I've talked to the carriers I've talked to I've gone into the stores nobody can get that Spanish off of hello you've reached Jim Wortham no so no one leaves the message okay so anyhow I'm uh, moving along I need to check that to see if she's uh, texts me or called the other phone or whatever I usually have to get both phone numbers and tell them how they can reach me on each one and um, you know what I'm looking at now eleven dollars I haven't done this yet I've seen it on TV a hundred times can I let go of eleven dollars to help tunnels to towers men and women killed in combat in the military at 411 started by a brother who, whose brother w w was killed a man whose brother was killed in 911 going in for the second time it crashed in on him killed him military people with no arms no legs they built houses for him Well, this is going toward the end, but I'm saying I choose very carefully, and I've watched this commercial many times. The Tunnels to Tower, t to t dot com. If you, that's probably would get you there. But Tunnels to Tower, and I usually think these places are. The administration's getting all the money, but in, in, in most of the money. But in this case, I've seen the houses. I've seen people walk in for the first time. They have no arms or legs. It's in a wheelchair. But they got two or three kids and a wife. And they walk in. And it's paid for. I promised you this. Can you write it down? Just a minute. Let me get it in front of you. Daggone it. Milk, thistle, M I L K T H I S T L E. If you eat garbage food, and you know what I'm talking about, if you've eaten. Vienna sausages with mustard and cheap crackers from the dollar store. If you drink anything, I get it off of Amazon. Don't bother about what brand I get. I may change brands. You read the reviews. You see how people are cleansing out their liver. I've worked 
uh, she probably figured it out by what I said earlier as a uh, also as a licensed alcohol and drug counselor I've kept people from getting transplants because I said your doctor never mentioned this milk thistle no Give it a try. Don't give up on what he says about getting on the liver transplant, but give it a try. Now I'm going to close with that, and I'm 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 going to, I'm going to thank you for watching this. If you like my style of presentation, if you like my what I share, if you think it's beneficial. I could use another subscriber. <laughs> I noticed the day after two that I left two days ago that it's almost hit 200 subscribers. I'm headed toward a thousand. But if if you like the how I present, hardly any notes, just those notes because I wanted to be sure to cover it. Um, please um, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. I want to wish you God's blessings the rest of your life. And I mean that. Thank you for sharing your time with me.